Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Space Between Ideas. I'm Blaine Gates. All right, where are we? Amazing. All right, so we did what? We did the Endeavor Elements. Who can tell me? <laughs> it's like a classroom. Who can tell me about the Endeavor Elements? At the bottom, we have shaping potential. We have potential. We need to shape this potential to become more competitive, to help more people, to draw more talent, to increase revenue. We can, we can do more than what we're currently doing. As we grow together, as we bring in more resources, as we have more infrastructure, as we have more skills, all right? We're shaping our potential. And how do we shape our potential? Well, we, we need to pick out some specific outcomes some, and those reuses. So those, those reuses are going to get funneled back into the bottom. And then we create a plan to achieve the next set of outcomes. And then we pull those reuses back to the bottom into the potential. Then we create a new plan and then we achieve more outcomes. And it just goes around and around. And what are some ways that we go around and around? Well, we talked about state synergies. So we have relationships that the interactions that we can work with in the potential area. And then in the agendas, we have some scenarios that we start to play out, how we can work with these people, and we choose a plan, and then we put it into action and achieve those outcomes. Also, we discuss the inventiveness, all right? So we want to create some kind of new innovation or prototype or product or service. And whatever, wherever we reach those outcomes that we try to obtain, they become reuses. They come back into the bottom, into the shaping potential. They become resources. The people, the ideas, the prototypes, the sales, the, the cash, everything that we have from the outcome is put back in the bottom. And now we want to continue to shape this potential by making another plan to reach new and ever higher outcomes. All right, so we talked about state synergies. We talked about state inventiveness. And of course, these endeavor elements, they can be broken down into nine different things in the state progress checklist. So you got four badges. Congratulations. Now we are working towards badge number five. All right, <laughs> so let's go. All right, so the next checklist is called state assumptions. State assumptions. Now, right away, you should be able to know that the state assumptions sounds kind of like make assumptions, all right? So next to, next to the endeavor element, form agendas, as it connects to the state progress checklist, you have make assumptions. Now, we made assumptions during this process of creating your new prototype. Remember when we were making assumptions, all right? So we were like, all right, let's figure out what other people are doing. Let's imitate. Let's what? Let's, let's integrate. Let's invent. Let's avoid. Let's counter. Like there's all these different things that we were doing. So we had to do research about all those different areas in order to come up with some assumptions for how we can build these scenarios. All right? And in case you thought that we like overkilled it, <laughs> for different things that you could be thinking about <laughs> now. Um, well, all right. So state assumptions, it's like, it's like uh, well, determine the extent to information meets needs. So what did you do when you went out and, and started to research those different things? What happened to your salesperson when you put them on the factory floor? What happened when you threw them out into a customer? Or he went with a customer to visit one of their customers? Or he had a potential customer and he had a discussion about how your competitors are working with them. And then you brought back all of this information and you did what with it? Or you had some other guys on your team that were doing research. How did they do that research? Where did they put the information? How did you build this system of information? And did you eventually have the information that you needed in order to create the prototype which was the basis for a new innovation, which got you the next stage of sales disruption. Remember that word, disruption? You disrupted the industry. Because why? Because you developed these assumptions, and then you acted on those assumptions. 
and you disrupted an industry. Or maybe you, you just like survived the pandemic <laughs> when all these other people lost their jobs. You were able to create a bridge. All right. Also, as you start to work through these checklists, you will have a better ability to spot the needs for innovation. Sorry. You will spot the needs for information. <laughs> We're moving from innovation to information. All right. So one thing that like you need to be able to do is you need to be able to describe and find needed data. This is a basic a first level first discussion about state assumptions discussion to find that needed data to describe i guess the first thing is to describe like the first thing that, like i think we all have a lot of experience with describing needed needed data because we all use search engines and in a search engine you just write down what you want now wouldn't it be nice if you could just write i want to accomplish this I want to be able to accomplish this. And it would give you the instructions, every piece of data that you need. I mean, to some extent, I think modern search engines do help us to, to give us the information that we need. As long as we ask the question in a way that we can achieve the result that we're looking for. It's like you have to do some sifting through. You have to change some of the words. But it seems like modern search engines are actually really fantastic for finding needed data. You also need to be able to create or build insight relevant to a decision or action. And this is key, right? So that's why we are making assumptions. That's why we are going through this checklist. Because the assumptions which we have are basically, it's the, it's the insight that we have derived from the information the insight is what gives us these assumptions and it's then it's these assumptions which influence like if you go to the state progress checklist it's, that's what's going to influence building these scenarios and then once you've built these scenarios it's then your assumptions again which will help you choose one specific plan it always goes back to the assumptions so we have to constantly be working with the information base in order to improve our assumptions, make sure our assumptions are correct so that, we are, so that we are making the correct decisions. And then eventually, hopefully, we can, decide, we can design some kind of information system that can capture needed data. So we need to capture this information constantly and be able to record it so that we can be constantly on top of the information which we need. Like, for example, I don't know if you use Google Alerts. I don't, I don't use Google Alerts right now. I used to. Like, every once in a while when there's, like, some news item that I, I want to stay on top of, then I'll create a Google Alert. And then it's like, you know, it's sending you the data about this topic as it's being released. And then it's recorded in my inbox and I can jump into my inbox. I can go through all the information. I can follow a topic. And there are much more complicated systems out there for capturing and recording data. Now, like, as you know, I've mentioned that now uh, I'm working with quite a few people in this business and there are, there are a few people who are, um, working on capturing data. So these are like research people. And so I think that this, the next six, seven days is going to be really relevant for people who are working in the research industry, people who would like to capture data in order to write reports, people who would like to capture data in order to write reports for other people, people who would like to capture data in order to create data systems, uh, also, if you are a consulting service, then obviously you need to capture some data. Uh, just on the top of my head, the guys that I'm working with, the guys and gals. Um, there are, like, one, the, there's one guy that I had a hard time with because he, al he already kind of had his uh, product put together. Uh, it was an online service. And really all he needed was marketing, help with marketing. And unfortunately, 
I, I mean, I could, I could, I could talk to him, you know, once, twice a week about his research, about what he's doing in order to find out how to market online. But I am not a uh, a consultant for online marketing. I do some research about it for my own business, but I'm still in the researching stage of doing digital marketing. So I'm not the best person to ask those specific details about. But if you would like to create a database for, uh, and, and would, you'd like to collect data and discuss the data that you, are, that you are searching, then that's what I can help you with. So the first point, wow, I barely got to the first point. So the first point is pretty simple, all right? So the first part is talking about the scope. Um, the scope. So you start to involve metadata types, which means what? It means you have to find the right sources. Now, sources for what? All right. So remember, you got to go back to some of the previous videos. The first thing that you need is an endeavor. Like, what are you working on? Write it out simply. And then it can be helpful if you can list out the sub endeavors. And then on top of that, it can be helpful if for each sub-endeavor, you talk about the specific details that you need. Now, is that useful for me just to explain that? Like, it would be easier for me to show you. So, you have to, if you're going to build a database, you have to build like a table of contents. So, you know, I helped one guy build a database. And it was quite useful for him. So the first thing he did was on the first tab in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheet, uh, on the first tab, we have the table of contents. The table of contents in the first line, it has the endeavor. What are you trying to do? You're trying to become the leader in this industry. You're trying to introduce this product. You're trying to sell this product. You're trying to manage this department. Like, what is it that you're trying to do? Are you in a research role? Or do you need to have a base of knowledge in order to work with a product or service? Now, once you have, like, your basic endeavor written on the first line, then this, this one guy, he has three sub-endeavors. As, as I've talked about earlier, um, I have four sub-endeavors with the business that I'm doing. And so you just write down, like, okay, the first sub-endeavor is what? Now, it'd be much easier, obviously, if you call me. <laughs> you sign up for one of my classes, and we talk face-to-face. -face. You, you only have to order just one class, and we can go through this process and make sure that, like, I understand exactly what is your endeavor. And then we can break those into sub-endeavors. And then for each one of those sub-endeavors, we're going to put down like specifically the scope of each research target. And that's the point, is like you want to have specific research targets. And then, so then on like the tab, if you're good at Excel, then the second tab, the third tab, and the fourth tab are going to be, there's one tab for each. So the first, the second tab is going to be your endeavor number one. The third tab is going to be your endeavor number two. And the fourth tab is going to be your endeavor number three. Man, is this, are you guys following along? <laughs> so when you go to your second tab, which would be your endeavor number one, then you write your, your, your well, your sub-endeavor number one. So you write the sub-endeavor at the top of the Excel spreadsheet. And then, like, say there were, like, four items underneath that sub-endeavor. Then you would turn those horizontal because they're vertical in your table of contents. You put them horizontal on your second tab. And then under each of these data points that you need to do research about, then you have two columns. So one is the source for where you are searching to get information about this topic. And then the second column, you write down the specific information. Like, what, what am I going to find like in that website? Or if you put like a PDF file, you, link, you can link it. Like if you have Google Drive, you can, you can have like a, a file cabinet in the file, in your file folder. And then you can 
just put your file cabinet. So you put the PDF files, you put all the documents, put everything in there. Then you can create a link to that document. And then you put the link into your, into your spreadsheet. So on the sources side, you just click the link. And then on the information side, you type out, like, what is that link going to give me? What is the, what is the insight that I got from that link? What did I learn from that link? All right, so the main point right now that I'm trying to say is that the source, the whole point of today's lesson, other, other than telling you that there's this thing called a database and you can start to build a database, and I'm sure everyone has their own way of creating a database, but that source, what is that source, all right? So that's the scope of your metadata types. Where are you getting your information from? What links do you trust? Is it substantiated? So if you find some data, you find some statistics, you find some numbers, you're looking at a graph, all right? Is it an indexed graph? Like what kind of data am I looking at? Is the person presenting the data to me because they're trying to tell me that their story is correct? And so they've manipulated their graph so that it tells their story? Do I understand the purpose of him presenting that graph in that way? Do I understand what those numbers mean? All right, so who, who are the sources of that data? What's the scope of your data? Who do you trust to get information from? Is this evidence? Are these, is the data I'm looking at, is the source, are they providing me evidence or opinion? How can I drill down and can I trust this data? How do I understand it? Who presented the data? Uh, finally, is it supported? Is there only one person that's saying this? Or them? Like today, like it's so crazy. You have everybody who has data for everything. Like, like you, you go onto Facebook and they tell you that like they have algorithms. So whatever you believe, they'll just show you more of what you believe because they want you to spend more time on their site. So they constantly reinforce your preconceived notions. But when you're doing business, what's the point of reinforcing your preconceived notions? What you really need is the evidence. You need the support. You need the, pro the data, which is going to enable you to succeed. All right, so today's lesson is to figure out what your sources are, find the sources. So I guess there's two points. One is to break down your endeavor into sub-endeavors and your sub-endeavors into the specific details about what you need to do research about. And then the second side is to make sure that when you go after your metadata, make sure that you have the best sources. So obviously it's gonna be an interesting next couple of days. Let's keep talking about this. If you need help putting together a database, come on over. Welcome to Space Between Ideas. I'm Blaine Gates.